This lecture will address the question of how do we characterize the wind for the purpose of estimating wind turbine output. The short answer is that we make measurements. Specifically, we measure wind speed and direction over an extended period of time. A meteorological tower, an example of which is shown in the illustration, has instrumentation for measuring wind speed and direction, ambient temperature and pressure, and other parameters of interest to weather forecasters. The standard height for a meteorological tower is 10 meters, so most weather data is for this height. There are a number of devices for measuring wind speed. This illustration shows a propeller vane anemometer. The tail vane here keeps the propeller pointed in the direction of the wind. This instrument measures wind speed and direction all in one instrument. There is a rotary position sensor in the pivot, gives direction information, and a counter for measuring propeller rotation speed that provides wind speed information. A second device, type of wind measuring device, is the rotating cup anemometer. This device, shown on the right, measures only wind speed and isn't direction sensitive. <laughs> so there's a sensor here to measure the rotating speed. The finned arrow-like device on the left measures, measures direction. The fins keep the sensor pointed into the wind and a rotary position sensor in the pivot provides wind direction information. The measurements provide a data set consisting of wind speed and wind direction data. In this lecture, we will focus on the wind speed measurements and save the wind direction measurements for the next lecture. Wind speed measurements are grouped into bins, where a bin is a range of velocities. For example, a bin contains all the measurements having a wind speed between 1 meter per second and 2 meters per second. Dividing the number of measurements in each bin by the total number of measurements give a, gives a probability that the wind speed will be in the range of that bin. Here is a sample data set for illustrative purposes. What is really needed is the frequency of occurrence, the probability for each speed so that the amount of time the wind is in a particular speed range is known. The leftmost column in the table lists the wind speed bins, each covering a 1 meter per second inter interval. Depending on how the data is collected, the information about frequency of occurrence can be presented in a variety of different ways. If, for example, a total of 10,000 wind speed measurements were taken, the second column shows the number of measurements where the wind speed was in the range of a particular wind speed bin. If the measurements were taken over the period of a year, the third column provides the number of hours per year where the wind speed was in the range of a particular wind speed bin. The probability, shown in the fourth column here, that the wind speed will be in the range of a particular wind speed bin can readily be calculated by dividing the total number of measurements into the number of measurements in each wind speed bin i.e. column 2 by 10,000, or by dividing the number of hours per year, which is 8,760 hours, into the number of hours for each wind speed data bin, the data in column 3. This particular data set is for Toronto's Billy Bishop City Centre Airport and is at 50 meter height rather than the usual 10 meter, 10 meter meteorological tower height. Wind speed probability data can be presented graphically. A plot of wind speed probability data is called a data wind histogram. The figure to the right is the annual wind speed histogram at 50 meter height for the Billy Bishop Center, City Center Airport. This wind speed probability distribution accounts for wind from all directions. The most probable wind speed in other words, the wind speed having the highest probability is in the range of 4 to 5 meters per second, as illustrated by the circle. Once you have the data, it can be organized in a variety of different ways. For example, seasonal variability of wind is important. Using data for the same location as the previous slide, 
This plot shows seasonal variation for the four seasons, winter, December, January, February, spring, March, April, May, summer, June, July, August, and fall, September, October, November. Note that there is some variation from season to season. The purple line, which <laughs> is the data for the summer, you can see has a much higher probability of having low wind speeds in the one to five meter per second range. So right here. Uh, conversely, in the range above seven meters per second on up to 15 meters per second, you can see that the summer data has the lowest probability of having those wind speeds. Winter is the opposite, so winter is the red data. You can see that the probability of the wind having a low wind speed is lowest in the winter and highest the highest wind speeds have the highest probability in the winter. Since wind power output is proportional to the wind speed cube, what appears to be low probabilities in these high wind speed ranges can have a disproportionate effect on power output. So despite the fact that these are small numbers, the very substantial difference in probability between the winter and the summer means that uh, for this particular site, at least on a qualitative assessment, uh, winter should produce the greatest energy output and summer the least. We've seen the, mean, the most probable wind speed from the histogram data, but sometimes it's useful to know the mean wind speed. Uh, formally, the mean wind speed is defined as the integral over all velocities of the probability for a particular wind speed times that wind speed. However, since we have our probabilities for discrete wind speed velocity ranges, bins, uh, we use a, a summation to approximate the integral. So our summation is shown here, and we essentially sum over the number of bins, or n is the number of wind speed bins. The term circled here is the midpoint wind speed velocity. So this vi min is the minimum velocity in the interval, so the left-hand side endpoint. vi max is the maximum wind velocity in the wind speed bin, the right-hand endpoint. And this is the probability then for the wind speed bin. If we apply this formula to the specific example for the Billy Bishop Airport data, we get a wind, mean wind speed of 5.2 meters per second. Many terms have been left out in this equation uh, as represented by these dots to make the slide readable, but you have the data. It's in the table in slide six to do the calculation on your own and you can check this. In this particular example, the mean wind speed of 5.2 meters per second isn't very different from the most probable wind speed which is the range 4 to 5 meters per second, but this is not always the case. A fat tail on the wind, wind distribution can result in a wind, mean wind speed much higher than the most probable wind speed. Each site will have its own characteristics. Let's conclude by summarizing. Wind is characterized by measurements of wind speed and direction. In this lecture we focused on the wind speed measurements. Typically, the overall wind speed range is divided into finite bins. Analysis of the wind speed measurements provides a probability, a frequency of occurrence, that the wind speed will fall within the range of a particular bin. A wind speed histogram is a graphical representation of probability data for each wind speed bin. The most probable wind speed and the mean wind speed each convey different information about the wind speed probability distribution. Finally, in terms of the data itself, there can be seasonal variation in wind speed probability distribution, which has an impact on the seasonal electrical energy output. Please try the questions that follow to give you some practice using wind speed information. Now that you've successfully completed the practice exercises, here is an exercise for your own interest. Find some wind speed data for your location. Most governments have a weather service that collects wind data, and that data is usually available to the public. 
Typically, it will be at 10 meters height, but that's fine for this purpose. If you can't find data for your location, pick a place you would like to visit or live and see if data is available for that location. Once you have some data, take a good look at it. Some questions to ask include, what is the most probable wind speed? What is the mean wind speed? And are there seasonal variations in wind speed? Good luck with the exercise. I hope you enjoy learning more about the wind in your location.